1970, Richard Nixon created the EPA. And here we are some 52 years later, and the EPA is now still disrupting the truck industry. By now, most of you probably already know that GP Transco is a great place for company drivers to work. But did you also know it's a great place for owner operators? On GP's website, they have an owner operator calculator that you can calculate your rates, your expected pay, and look at your projected earnings and they're 25 percent higher than the national average when it comes to owner operators. Check them out at gptransco.com. In 1997 the EPA began to focus on the trucking industry and started implementing change into the emissions from trucks at the end of 2003. So the first motors that were truly affected, only slightly so though, were the 2004 engines but by 2007, as the emission demands grew from the EPA, the trucking industry knew that they were in serious trouble. And in 2007, small companies and owner operators started to look for a workaround solution because they were losing money because these engines were breaking down. Now the big carriers too were also affected by this and they realized that they needed a workaround solution. And all the big carriers just went out and bought spare trucks. So every time one of the new emissions trucks broke down, they'd just tow it home and switch it out with a new one to carry on. But small carriers and owner operators could not do that. They needed a different type of workaround, and that's when the glider industry and the delete industry really started to take off. By 2010, Caterpillar quit manufacturing truck engines because they figured out that what the EPA wanted was impossible to achieve without seriously affecting the reliability of the engine. And by this point, glider kit companies like Fitzgerald were just booming because single owner operators and small fleets were fighting to survive. And they weren't breaking these laws just to be ignorant about it. They were fighting for survival and they needed reliability. And the reliability had gone out of the new trucks. Not only were the new emissions engines unreliable, they were also adding ten to fifteen thousand dollars to the price of every truck and the average truck driver just couldn't afford that additional hit but the EPA did not care they recognized that the glider kit first the glider kit industry was circumventing their regulations and in 2019 the EPA shut down the glider kit industry a commission study by the EPA commissioned in 2021 surveyed the trucks on the road and found out that over 450,000 vehicles were still on the road using delete systems and that they needed to clamp down now on the delete systems now that they'd solved the glider, glider kit problem. So in 2022, January of 2022, the EPA started to lean really hard on the delete shops and the drivers using delete systems. Now we have to recognize that the EPA is a national body. It's federally regulated and the different states are in charge of their own implementation. And California, states like California, were into that well, well before most states caught on. They, they started working with CARB in around 2007. But now all the other states are starting to catch up and get on board with this stuff under the pressure of the, the national EPA. And now the big fines are coming to most states for truckers. Recently, Michigan initiated fines in the millions of dollars to a couple of delete shops that were still specializing in these, these delete systems and reroutes. Now, a million dollar fine or a $10 million fine, as a few of them were, are not designed to uh, deter using these type of systems. They're designed to make the truck drivers and the shops go bankrupt. So a warning here to truck drivers, if you're still running an engine that has a delete system or a modified system that circumvent the emissions, you might want to rethink that and think about getting it changed back to factory specs because undoubtedly sooner or later, they're coming for you. It's sad to realize that after nearly 20 years, they still can't get these emissions engines to be as reliable and run as efficiently as the old engines could. I'd like to thank Fred Besmer a subscriber of ours that suggested this topic because it is going to affect 
thousands of drivers. On the brighter side, I've got a good story for you. Back in the day, early 90s, I was coming out of Michigan. There had been a fresh snowfall. It was February, I believe. It was early in the morning. I-94, I was headed west on I-94. There wasn't any traffic at all. I was loaded right heavy and I was just trucking for Jesus, making good time, sailing along, nothing on the road. I wasn't really paying attention because the truck was getting good traction. As I say, I was heavy and I was blowing along. I was down around Sawyer, around the 12, 12 mile marker. And I looked up and there's a trooper going by the other way. He's headed east on 94. And I looked down at my speedometer real quick and realized I was well above the 55 mile an hour speed limit. Glanced in the mirror and I thought, I'm going to wait and see if he spins around to go after me. Sure enough, he hits the brakes, he dives down into the median strip. And all I see in the mirror is a huge puff of snow. And the snow clears after a few seconds and the trooper never comes back out of it. The trooper dove down into the ditch to do a U-turn to come after me and chase me. There was so much snow in the median strip, he didn't make it up the other side. I kind of smiled to myself and was glad to cross the state line. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down. I'm scared stiff. This new agenda from the EPA is going to be another nail in the coffin for owner operators. I'll see you on the backhaul.